You're in my shot, dickhole. <laughs> Daniel, where are we right now? We're at Balcones Distilling. Balcones Distilling in Waco, Texas, because we're gonna do an episode about blending whiskey. Specifically, how to blend your whiskey. Mm -hmm. Like a master distiller. Who are we gonna be talking to? Today? We're gonna to talk to Jared Hempstead, the master distiller at Balconis, also won Master Distiller of the Year in the World in London. And Balconis Whiskey yeah. wins awards all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go blend some stuff. Done. You keep getting in my shot. <laughs> Yo, yo. Yes. How we doing, sir? All right, you? Yeah, good to see you. One of my favorite things has been to spend time with Jared, watching him blend stuff, getting to try things he's worked on, watching some of their creations change as different things get blended together. And I love his process. First of all, it is the premise for the episode, is that even a reasonable premise for people at home with their collections to be able to go through a process, a method, to intentionally start creating a blend based on what they have. Yeah. It's a little different when you're blending and you work at a distillery and blending because you're working towards a profile that already kind of exists, right? Um, so that's not what you would be doing at home with bottles off the shelf. Right. But I think the process of getting there and the analysis of trying some things, seeing what happens, making adjustments would be the same. So we really enjoy kind of opportunities to pull the veil back. There's a lot that goes into making whiskey uh, that if you're not working in it, you just don't get to experience. If we can bridge that somehow, walk through a little bit of how this normally goes that can somehow apply to people trying their hand at it at home, I think then we'll, we'll have succeeded. We started this process with the Magnificent Bastards in the Patreon. Mm. We tasted 17, yeah, yeah, something like that. Mini samples. Yes, lots. That we tested thoroughly. That's not really that much, guys. That's like... Really? There's more samples? Oh, yeah. We'll try it. We'll, 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 we'll go by the blending room. We're trying to wrap up a malt blend right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, 14, 17 samples. We'll probably like have three or 400 on the table, so. So you really shortchanged us. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go out and taste more hundred? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, make Jesus. This building obviously has been around a lot longer than Balcones. Where are we right now? We're in what used to be the Texas Fireproof Storage Building, built in 1923. Oh, that's handy. One of the, yeah, Fireproof Storage, <laughs> nice. It's one of the few buildings that survived the tornado that came through in 56. Mm -hmm. This building and the Alico were both in line, and pretty much everything else in the line of the tornado was destroyed, but this is here. It's pretty pretty, pretty stable. Yeah. Post-apocalyptic scenario, I don't know if any of your, your new reviewers are into that kind of stuff. But it's here. But we all meet here. <laughs> my old diesel suburban that can run on vegetable oil. That will that'll be a, we'll drive around, but we'll stay here. <laughs> okay, got it. I'm in. We'll be hungry, but whiskey has calories. It's official. Zombie apocalypse. The, it ever goes is, down. Yeah, this is where we come. Everybody meet up at Balcones. I know you from the movies. <laughs> I see both of you in the movies. Yeah. So this is Gabe. Uh, I supervise uh, the distill distillation staff. I kind of coordinate blending a little bit and I crunch numbers and I stress out. <laughs> <laughs> what room is this right here? So yeah, we're, now we're in the blending room where we, this room is the bulk of what we've been working on the last few weeks for malts. We kind of wrapped up today, tentatively wrapped up today. You gotta get a picture of the post-it notes and see the kind of tasting notes and the, de the, the level of scrutiny. Each one of these is gonna be a single barrel of malt they're mostly separated by the first fills are all over here. Some of the second fills are in there. Uh, there's going to be different dates. Basically all the same stuff, but a range of dates, a range of different barrel types. What are you trying to taste? What are you trying to pick out here? What's the, the, the intention behind the tasting other than just tasting a lot of whiskey? <laughs> right. That's what I want. That's what I wake up like, oh, I'm just going to go in and drink a bunch of whiskey today. I think most people would be really surprised if you were to taste um, one day's distillation for us, which could be 18, 20 barrels, exact same day. Barrels that came in from the same lot, similar age range, similar toast and char profile, just how much variability there is. The whole reason blending happens with whiskey is that very few of these single malt barrels alone would probably taste like you're used to our malt tasting. If you've had it before, it would probably take me a while before I could find one that like this one by itself is exactly what you're used to. You have to combine them all. So, some, some, some things are more tannic than we want, more spice than we want. We're chasing fruit, we're chasing the, the mouth feel. And the combining then, this is yeah. you going through the barrels and figuring out which ones should be combined in which proportions to really get that result that you've 
basically you had on the market that people know and love. Yeah. So yeah. we're working with three different oak species and eight different toast and char profiles. So and then refills on top of that. Yeah, so refills on top of that. So it's not just so it's complicated. Is yes. what you're saying? <laughs> Trying to find a really ridiculous one. This one says yeast waffle. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as many as we do. So the results of the Magnificent Bastards voting, these are the ones that they voted on, yeah? These are the three that they voted. 15939. And then 15928 is like slightly lighter European. Okay. And then yeah. the Peated X Rumble. So we have the whiskeys pulled and we want to start intentionally creating a blend here. Okay, you guys got a whiskey ball, we have a fur ball. <laughs> <laughs> Look, a fur ball! So if someone's trying to do this stuff at home, what should they have basically with them? Just regular droppers, which of course aren't measured. Mm -hmm. There's no need to go spend a hundred bucks on like a lab pipette. If you wanted to get a sharpie and put a line on there to make sure you're getting the same amount each time. Mm -hmm. I'll reiterate what I was already saying about how I'd like to start though. I think if you haven't spent some time to really articulate what's working from one of your bottles that you're hoping ends up contributing to the blend, you're gonna end up having a harder time going back and making adjustments. So you're not liking the body, you're not liking the finish, it's a little too spicy. If you didn't you may have a gut feeling of like who's doing that, but if you didn't, um, if you didn't sit down and kind of make some of those notes for yourself, you're just making more work for yourself later instead of being able to quickly, uh, most efficiently fix some of those things you're not liking about the blend. If you're doing it at home, if you know what your goal is, stating that for yourself might be would help. If right. you're just going to mess around and see what happens, that's also fine. Understanding our comp individual components is the goal here. Yeah. Can I try aggressively to write some really pretentious Please. game style tasting notes? He usually goes above and beyond when we have like a special release. He'll work on the notes and then like that. Filter it, try to filter it through me. And last time they were so ridiculous <laughs> that I was like, print. Yeah. <laughs> it changed nothing. To anyone who's had a lot of our stuff, I can go ahead and articulate it. We know in house the texture, mouthfeel, density is huge for us. Mm -hmm. So we also err on that side. There might be something that's way more interesting, complex, subtle, layered. But, it's but if it's profile. thin or if it's dry, we usually will keep messing with it to try to beef that up just because we know we personally like that. Remind us, which whiskeys do we have here? So these are all uh, Golden Promise, uh, Scottish Barley, Single Malt. From here, we have two First Fill European Oak mm -hmm. with two different uh, Toast and Char profiles. We have the 62, which is going to be historically should lean towards a more robust kind of American profile, so hints of smoke. Um, some darker kind of reduced charred things. 61 is used in the wine industry a lot for white wines. It accentuates kind of minerality or even like orchard fruit, skins, things like that. And then the middle one is a refill barrel. I don't remember what kind of, oh, this was X-Rumble. Yeah, Rumble. So Rumble is one of our spirits we make. This, uh, not a whiskey, fig, honey, and sugar. The 65 PPM custom peated Golden Promise that went into uh, a, a used Rumble barrel is what we have. In the and this is, the most unique by far because of the, the peat. Yeah, it's used barrel, it's got rumble. Really, this one is like an outlier in almost every way for yeah. the, mm -hmm. the two on the table. We're gonna try the things, take some notes, have some thoughts, then verbalize it. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start, I'll start from your left. Uh, so on that one, I got, it was a lot thinner and lighter after, because I came to it from this one. Right. And so I got like a honey type citrus. I wrote spice and dead leaves, kind of dry. I got almost a slight sweet rubber type thing. And then a little bit of metallic in the nose. I mean like the baking spice stuff was all over it. Mm -hmm. It's like not quite holiday, but maybe snickerdoodly, something in that range. Yep. I still got a little bit of acetone on the nose, which I like. I think that's my shiny metal. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I wrote some minerality on the palate too. So like some all that stuff, you get mineral and metal and um, some of the solvents. And then on palate, it went dry, spice, honey, and then a lot of surprisingly a lot more pepper than I thought. I described it as almost prickly. 
Or if you do, if you do a lot of sparkling water, some of the brands, some varieties have a much smaller bubble, I mm -hmm. guess, for lack of a better way to say right. it. It's like really tiny ones. And I got some like herbal stuff. I mean, it wasn't quite rosemary, but cardamom pod, something in that kind of a savory herby. Yeah. Not the stickiest, not the roundest. No. The acidity is good though. You did that one first. I did this one first. And this one to me was just right out of the gates, kind of a dark brown sugar, kind of grainy. Uh, I even wrote some dark fruit in there. A lot of times if I have notes that I'm not quite, I can't quite place, I'll do question marks. Mm -hmm. And then ones that I'm like super pumped about, they get an exclamation mark. So yeah, just brown sugar has an exclamation mark. Yeah, me first note, huge. Bam. Yeah. I had like wine reduction or balsamic in there. Oh, balsamic. And I think yes. that kind of takes me to those fruit places that are also very reduced and yes. almost burnt. They still have plenty of acid, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Free and barbecue, things like that. Yeah. Something in that range. Yeah, because on that palate, I got that almost sandalwood molasses. Yep. Okay. yep. To me, those would be like similar. Right. You go around the room and debate. It's molasses, it's balsamic, it's Korean barbecue. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, we're still talking about the same savory, impact. reduced, acidic, sweetness, fruity sweetness that has some burn to it, some, some char. This one had the best palate mouth, or mouthfeel entirely yeah. of all of them for me. And it sort of went, I wrote in order, thin, round, light, rich wood oil. Sandalwood comments, really nice though. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna switch to peat. Well, Shiny yeah. Shiny rubber. We've talked about it a little bit before, but since we're using Highland peat, it's gonna be a lot more akin to Springbank Highland Park. The best example actually has been Riac. And then I wrote fresh green and round in the nose still. By the time I got to the palate, I was straight into like a meat kind of char, mm -hmm. where there's a lot of protein sweetness to the like pork or beef. Mm -hmm. Meat notes. Yeah, brisket. Not quite ham or anything like that, but. After you get through that, I wrote vanilla cream and nice. and a fight between uh, like a fruit and floral, almost plant floral, almost fruity. But the cut stem, yes, they're spraying water. You've got even the plastic, you got everything. You've got yes. the little green, you whatever those things about that condense on the. Yeah. There is some mulch in there. I get you know, that. And I, yeah, I can see. Absolutely. The palette for that one, this one just sort of kept flowering until it became a little overwhelming. Like it just kept opening and opening and opening until it got aggressive. This is really dry. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you just went back to it, but I am super dried out. Yeah. Even though the mid palate, I got like salted butter, some white wine notes mm -hmm. in there, fresh pastry, maybe like Danish. Not quite. Oh yeah, not, not quite croissant. It's, it's already gone it's for me. Butter. Yeah, it, it goes. It dissipates really quick. I'm super dry, which is ironic because it doesn't taste. Tannic, mm -mm. but it's dry. It's super dry. Yeah, it doesn't taste bitter. This one's gonna have to hold everything together. Gone through the three whiskeys, taken the notes, decided what you liked, what you wanted to enhance. There's two approaches. Even when we do our, our blending classes that we do here, mm -hmm. combining three things you really like in equal parts is a good place to start. Another thing we also like to do and encourage people to do is if they have a really strong favorite. Mm -hmm than to just kind of spike that favorite with a little bit of other things, just okay. to like add some layers to it. Right. So especially since we were hoping to maybe have a couple of different directions, mm -hmm. we'll try to start with one that's a pretty close to even proportions, but maybe we also want to grab, man, that one's my jam. And right. let's see how much of these others really just kind of add some layers and some subtlety right. to it. I dig um, it. So we can do both. Now, so, I would love to hear, instinctively, what would you blend right now? There's probably two directions I would go. Okay. I would probably try to enhance the peated, maybe even like 80, 90% that. Right. And then try to tweak how much of these two guys. Right. Blossom it. And then this one as the base. Not the whole lot of this guy. Right. And then keep bringing in Use more and more and more and more of that until, until, right. until it lands. Ah, so see, that fun. your second one was my That's what you're thinking. So we do this in the school quite a bit where we're, we're getting our students to try to blend things and what everyone underestimates is blending peated whiskey is so hard because over and over and over, you'll get something that the peat is really aggressive and you'll try to tame it with something that makes it doubly peated some, for some reason. And then you'll have another one where you add just a little bit and you obliterate the peat completely. Peat is so unpredictable. Yeah, it's very unpredictable. And so I'm gonna let Jared do that one. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got these guys uh, that actually know science that work here now. <laughs> Gabe and Johnson. Yeah. So yeah, you're getting, and then it will lock. So like now that's how far it will go down. Oh, that's so cool. So you can just get super, super, super. Precise. Precise. So when you're starting with a base, what do you start with as a number? 
I wouldn't start with anything less than a 20 ml sample. Cool. I'm going to add, because right now in my memory of my notes, hey, and don't judge me with your eyes. I won't look at you. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best way for us to not. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, because on mine for this one, 39, brown sugar, we ended up with balsamic, ended up with sandalwood, rich wood oil. I'm gonna try to add some of the honey spiciness from this one in that autumn that I really liked. I put just wrote dead leaves, but that's sort of forest dead leaves. So this is three to a 20 proportion. And I'm gonna let it sit for a second while you figure out what you wanna do. The chemical reactions that are happening is these things are combining. Mm -hmm. uh, we always talk about the glass being angry, right. but right off the bat, things are aggressive that won't be here even in five or 10 minutes. Right, right when you just add things together, you're just like, Hey, hey guy, and this guy and that guy throw you all in a room in like really tight space and shut the door. Like there's gonna be a little bit of like, okay, acclimating to each other. This is Did the you one try the three, three, three one, 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 one. So this is a combination of both. Yeah, three. that's where we just so. equal amounts, all three. All right. Keep it simple. He still wrote the three correctly. <laughs> so there's no double blind. It here. looks like a three. We both know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> the peat is less on the nose than I thought yeah. it would be for being so much. First fill wood, that's another weird thing about our peat releases currently up until now the two we've done, which isn't much. We have so much first fill in there. Nobody on the planet is used to drinking peated malt with the backdrop of first fill wood. Yeah, explain mm -hmm. it it what first fill so Well, different. first fill here is, because right. in American, Scotland, American, yeah, American, American first, first fill, first fill virgin. Yeah. virgin oak. Because in Scotland, they call first fill the first time they fill it, but they're typically getting used barrels. A UK first fill is the first refill. Yes. Which by definition is not the first. <laughs> not the first thing. The equal parts of all three. Mm -hmm. The peat is more subdued than I would have hoped for. But Son of a bitch, it's gonna be. It's good. That's better than what I just created. Okay, I'm gonna add peat and hope that I get there because I really like that that's become meaty peated sweet. Yeah. The glow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Bruce Leroy. Bruce Leroy. Yeah, no, I know. I know. I gotta, I gotta focus. I gotta focus. It's fun. It's good to know for all these videos I've seen what normally what actually goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. Like, oh, he's so focused. Uh, uh, Turns out he's a good editor. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly would you say we do here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with people. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with you? Why can't you realize I'm good? Yeah. Of the three we, we decided to mess with today, I'm really excited about the peated. I'm looking at the pros and cons of the other two barrels. So this one, there's a lot of cool stuff here. I really dug the acetone. There's some fruit. He got citrus. I kind of got like some, like some white grape skin kind of stuff. Mm. If I could bring some of that in, that could be really cool. This one's got a lot of pastry and some dairy notes, mm. salted butter. And then the other barrel that he's using as his base, has all this really deep, thick, syrupy, reduced molasses, balsamic yeah. things that we talked about. Yeah. If I could figure out the proportions of what's best about all those and just add those as layers to ice the cake, that would, that would be my ideal end result. Once again, this can be endless. And if you really want to nerd out on these mixes, you can just keep going, keep changing proportions, keep altering, and you never stop. So I'm stopping right now. <laughs> Because I really liked it, and there's a chance I could find something I like more. There's a chance I could ruin this, so I'm gonna leave it. Obviously, everybody knows your music background and stuff, but yes. other friends of mine that worked in the music industry, you were talking about a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. The other thing I've heard music people talk about is before you maybe you even start recording this album, yeah. pick a release date. Oh yeah. Otherwise, you will mix this and remix this and remix. You'll this kill it. Retrack and remix it and retrack, and you'll never put it out. And maybe people who don't do music, maybe they don't realize everything you ever make, whiskey, music, whatever, yeah, but if you work in a creative field, you're probably gonna find problems with all of it. Oh yeah. So to start from this hypothesis that I can get it perfect at some point is just dumb anyway. Yeah, it never happens. Way. Record a moment, be okay with it, do your best. Let's aim for the best possible blend that the MBs and the Patreon are gonna be able to, to grab for yeah, themselves. So right now, one is just mix them all together. Which doesn't always work. We could discuss if we think proportions might need to be worked up on that. Right. I think it's... That's pretty...
amazing. It's, it's a, I'm going to tell you that that was the equal parts. That was yeah. the equal parts. I'm going to tell you that my blend, I, I did not necessarily improve on the equal parts. It's just different. I'm not doing it. Well, you totally have the peated in there, don't you? I've only just yeah. begun. <laughs> I think it's really funny how Jared found another gear when he realized this was getting bottled. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um. <laughs> Pick this up in the morning and uh, yeah. <laughs> Can we start over? I actually, that's I don't usually actually approach whiskey that way. I'm I'm on the side of a discovery. Actually, mm -hmm. this kind of snap judgment thing, and I know a lot of people that do it. It's great for knowing what you like. That's great. Even thinking this turned out pretty good. Still knowing we're gonna good. bottle it doesn't change how much time I feel like we need to put in because we'll make something that's definitely worth sitting. All right, so you guys have locked in three options, three choices here. What landed in these glasses? What are the options that the MBs and the Patreon are gonna be able to vote on? So I'm gonna say we start with equal proportion blend. The peat sort of took over in the nose on this one a little bit, and then, but it disappears pretty quickly. Actually, it heads this direction into the citrus dark honey, mm -hmm. even though you'd think it might head into the dark sugar molasses direction. The acidity's still nice, there's some of that minerality and like zest. Mm-hmm. But the peat doesn't dominate the palate. Mm -mm. This one takes over the palate, I feel like. That dark sugar molasses becomes the cornerstone of the palate. But it's still, yeah, it's, it's constantly changing. It's dark, it's got a lot of reduction, mm -hmm. like, you know, caramelized sugar stuff. But the finish has a little bit of that peppery peat note. Uh, for me, this one, my blend, uh, the, the peat, we were talking about this, the peat sort of disappears. Even though it's there, it's not strong enough to become peat as a clear direction. It sort of ends up as like a peppery note that doesn't quite become smoky. The peat's making some of the other notes taste more interesting. Yes. And not standing alone. Right. Yeah, I, keep, I love your word reduction. It keeps coming back to the reduction on this. I use that word to make it sound like I cook more than I actually do. <laughs> <laughs> Great body. Some almost coffee maybe. Some, yeah. dark, some really dark chocolate kind of stuff going on. Yes. There. Bitterness of like real dark chocolate. Yeah. Not uh, quite the nuttiness of nibs, but maybe headed that direction a little bit. Yours was a dominant peated base and it went shockingly light and airy even with the peat. Yeah. Yeah, and the refill, the barrel we picked has so much of like confectioner sugar, um, another term we use in house a lot that just kind of we've landed on was yellow cake, mm. which is not a bad note, but it's not very specific. Like, yep, that's vanilla, it's flour, there's mm -hmm. some butter, there's egg. Um, yeah, that's where you keep bringing the pastry back into it. But just a little bit of the other two barrels, the peat on the nose dropped and mm -hmm. the body got so much better. Which is also always a good question. When we do the master class blending classes that we do here, one of the things you always have to come back and ask yourself is, you worked on a blend, is it better than the single barrel? Right? This, I think this is an improvement over that single barrel by itself. Oh, I, uh, the single barrel repeated. Mm -hmm. Totally yeah. agree. It brought, it accented the things you liked about that single barrel, but it added to it. Way more vanilla, citrus. The peat doesn't dominate, so it does bring the peat down a little bit but the finish uh, kind of narrows down a little bit. It, do, it doesn't have that weird rich oil that the other two have. Mm -hmm. It's a much drier. Mm -hmm. Spicy is the wrong word, but it's definitely more prickly. Yeah, it's more prickly. Pretty decent amount of acid on it. It feels like citric yeah. of some kind with it. Almost pith maybe more than citric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's three very different things. Yeah. yeah and so now we just need to figure out which one. Of the three, do you have a favorite? So I went mine, which we'll call the dark sugar blend. Okay. And then I went citrus peat. And then I went equal parts. Some of the biases that on my end is that we're blending our own products all the time. And this maybe feels the most house to me. It does. I and totally so, agree with that. No question. I blended something that leans more Balconis than the other this two mixtures. This seems the most obviously ours. When we're working on special projects, one of the fun parts for me, since I work with our stuff all the time and our house profiles all the time, I get most excited about divergent yeah. paths, alternate universes. This one that Jared created over here is the only one in this lineup that I don't know if I would so recognize that right. as Balconis. 
Which once again, that's not a good criteria for objectively determining <laughs> yeah. a quality whiskey. It's definitely good. But as someone who blends professionally, this is more interesting to me because it does veer off. Right. Um, the, there's no bad blend in this. If I was presented with any of these alone as something someone wanted to show me, I could get behind all three of them. The good news is it doesn't look like, especially whenever you're blending with your own collection, there's not a wrong way to go about this, right? Yes, you, that find, is good news. you find something you really like in a whiskey, and then incrementally, by small portions, you start playing with other whiskeys in that foundational whiskey, mm -hmm. and you can uh, end up with something totally different, magical, or maybe a slight variation. And you might find yourself grabbing a super woody and tannic. Uh, cast strength bourbon and go in, man, I might throw some smoke in there and see what happens. Or maybe I go grab a, uh, a heavily sherry and just see what that does. So there's a curiosity that I think most people who spend a lot of time buying, drinking, talking, reviewing whiskey already have. But if there's a combination you feel like you've never experienced, why not, right? You guys actually do blending classes here. The idea is to, once again, bring people kind of behind the curtain. Here's things that people in whiskey production get to do all the time. I want regular consumers to get to have some of those experiences because it helps you be a better drinker. It helps you understand what's in your cabinet better if you appreciate kind of what goes into getting it made. So the classes happen here at Balcones. So yeah. Yeah, right up where do you go to sign up for them? Uh, they're on the website. We have our annual cycle of master classes. We have the first one is just whiskey appreciation. The second one is distillation, tastes a lot of new make, cuts, all that stuff. Uh, the third one is about maturation. We do a lot with different toast and char profiles and oak species. And then the last one is uh, make your own blend class. Tin barrels on the table, walk through, put a blend together, and then with some staff to help you when you're like, this is mostly cool, it's drier than I want. The finish is kind of weird. Then we can look at, help you look at the components, try to help you get to where you're walking out with a bottle you just really happy with and proud of um, that you can take home. It's absolutely 100% unique and never going to happen again because we hand bottle them at the end of the class and that barrel is going to end up getting used in a blend and it's gone. Is this the bourbon coming off of here? Yeah, this is 100% blue corn bourbon coming out. Yep, we're in the middle of the uh, hearts collection. Is there anything else that would be helpful for people to know or consider to think about whenever they are using their own collection to blend stuff at home, uh, trying to see if they can improve things that maybe they're not in love with yet? Asking yourself if there was a flaw with this, what it would be, or if, even if something you don't find flawed, if you were to augment this in some way, what would it be? If, Weller 12 is your jam, but you've always thought the mid palate was a little bit drier, flatter than you want. Find something big and juicy to fix that without changing much else. Or if you want a longer finish, you want an aroma improved. And once again, keep good notes, pay attention, even play with proof. Something you love, you combine two things, now you proof it a little bit and it could be a game changer. So you're trying to enjoy this, right? So make something you like, keep doing it over and over, keep good notes so you can, you can improve on what you did the last time. And, uh, yeah, have fun.